now, can you help me reach out to your neighbor and just smile at them, wave at them, and welcome them into the house of the Lord? No touching, no handshake. Uh, if you, you may want to exchange elbows as it's our new protocol. Well, I pray that will come to pass also in Jesus' name. I also want to use the opportunity to acknowledge all those who are watching us through the online platforms. It's interesting to know that increasingly our membership is uh, increasing on that platform. And all, all over the world, literally. Praise God. Um, uh, just aside, I'm sure some of you have noticed that one of the sound bites from the technical department, can we appreciate the technical department? We have an amazing group of skilled people in the order of Bezalil and Aholiab in that department. God bless you guys and your pastors. Uh, one of the sound bites they did, the one uh, where Pastor Tunji was encouraging people to go and take the dreaded vaccine, praise God, is gone viral all over the world. I get people have sent it to me from Scotland, from America, from England, everywhere. And they say, ah, this is your church. I say, ah, he, that man is on his own. No. Praise God. We thank God for men who are sold out and will give you the full expression of the gospel. Amen. The Lord will watch over you. The Lord will keep you. But by his grace also, the Lord will give us uh, spirits so that we can discern the seasons and take the right actions in Jesus name let us pray Father we want to thank you and bless your holy name indeed we bring our alabaster box before you and in this context through the ministry of the word I pray Father you will empty me and fill me I pray you, the words I speak today will not come in the enticing words of human wisdom, but in simplicity, yet back with power. Power to heal, power to convict, power to change, power to transform. But more importantly, power to show forth your glory. That indeed the world will say, we serve a God that lives. Thank you, glorious King. In Jesus' name I pray. This morning I bring a word I title, His fire in my bones. But really, the full expression of the caption is, His word like fire in my bones. And I'm taking my cue from Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 8 and 9. Jeremiah 20, verse 8 and 9. I'll read the New Living Translation. When I speak, the words burst out. Violence and destruction, I shout. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say, I will never mention the Lord or speak in his name. His words burn in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it. Here Jeremiah cuts a picture of a man who is discouraged. A man who had been sent on an errand he would rather not deliver. A prophet is 
tagged the wailing prophet. Why? Because his ministry was primarily to call the people to repentance. And where they did not heed his message, the follow-up message was that of judgment. How many of you know that nobody likes to hear negative things? Well, it will appear that every time he presented himself before people, irrespective of what he wants to do, he finds himself speaking the word for the moment. And many times the word was not palatable to the hearers. Probably not even palatable to him too. And we see him here saying, I can't control myself. I want to speak nice words. But the words that come out are words of warning, condemnation. And when I decide because of the consequences of these words that I will no longer speak. It's like that which is in me wants to kill me. I can't resist it. I can't how does King uh, frankly say it? I can't explain it. I can't contain it. Your love is so amazing. Now you know where that, that, where that scripture came from. From the book of Jeremiah. Why? Because many times when God sends you on a mission, it's usually a mission him possible. On the surface, it is impossible. But within, it is him possible. I hope somebody will get it. But yet, despite all he went through, and he went through a lot. For those of you who have been following us in our Bible study, one of the things we're learning from Jeremiah is that he had to deal with depression, anger, a lot of mood swings. And if you look throughout the gamut of his message in the book of Jeremiah, you can see an interesting journey with God. Even as he resisted the call, but yet had to convey the message and how God encouraged him along the way. Praise God. But yet, we found out that throughout all his challenges, God kept him. We are in challenging times and seasons. We are in times and seasons when if you don't know God, please I beg you, go and look for him. And may you find him. We are in times and seasons when the intellect is being confounded. Paradigms are changing. What you knew yesterday is not relevant for today. We're in seasons where even when you try to forecast the future, if you don't have his fire in you, you will say, God, take me. So this morning, what exactly did Jeremiah mean when he said his word is like fire in my bones? He was a vessel and the spirit of God was on him. For him to accomplish his assignment, he had to totally depend on God and be totally committed to him. 
That was the only way he was able to overcome his challenges. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. At one point in time, they tried to even drown him. He went through a lot. I don't know what you're going through, but you're in good company. I'm sure a lot of you have not been imprisoned for doing righteous things. I'm sure there's no physical assailant that is running after you. You may have spiritual ones, but by grace of God, God will deal with those ones. And all I'm trying to tell you is that as it was then, it's probably now, and you are feeling the same challenges and pressures, more so because you are a child of God. That is why even that God required that he be totally dependent on him and be totally committed to him to be able to overcome his challenges, we are also called in this generation and more so in this season to be dependent on God and to be led by the Holy Spirit. And brethren, there is no shortcut. You, repeat after me, moi. That's French for me. Amy in Yoruba. Me. There is a demand from God that you're pressing into his presence yourself. And the only way, there's no shortcut. The one, you give your life to Jesus. Two, you nurture a relationship in the place of the word. I was listening to an interview on radio on my way to the church this morning. We were asking the person being interviewed, what is the secret of your work with God? He said, discipline. I make sure my alarm is set. I wake up. Say many times I don't want to get up. But guess what? I force myself. His word may be like a fire in your bones. Brethren, the food of the spirit and ultimately your soul, for the well-being of your soul, is the word of God. Can somebody please repeat after me the word of God? Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book, the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Meditate night and day. Eat it. Chew on it. Think on it. Be consumed by it. Desire it more than you desire your next meal. Romans 8.14 Romans 8.14 says For who are, all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. There is a connection between the Spirit and the Word. They go together. By the time you give your hearts to Jesus, by the time you genuinely repent of your sins 
and you invite Jesus into your life, by the time you begin to read the word, the word begins to change from logos to rema. It changes from just being letters, prose, poetry. There is a connection between the word and the spirit in you right now. And guess what? That word begins to do what? Do a transforming work in your life. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. The fear of the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fear. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. I want to spend a few moments on those scriptures to look at the character of God's word and how the God's word can become fire in your bones just like Jeremiah. Verse 7 of that Psalm 19 says the word of God, the law of God, or the instructions of the Lord are perfect. Someone please repeat after me, perfect. What is perfect? Can I have a response from anyone? What's the meaning of perfect? Sorry? No complaints. Oh, complete, yes. You cannot take away from it or add to it. He says it's so perfect that, guess what? It revives the soul. It converts the soul. It gives new life. The word of God in you transforms you. For one, it makes you know the mind of God. So many times as a pastor in counseling, it's interesting how people have opinions that many times don't match up with the word of God. Your opinions are not perfect. But God's word is perfect. Your opinion is subject to change. But God's word is everlasting. Heaven and earth will pass away. Guess what? The word of God will remains. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. John 3 verse 5 John 3 verse 5 Jesus replied I assure you no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit water there is representative of the word because the word is refreshing to the soul the word is refreshing to your human being soul and the totality of your being so whenever you see water, it's talking about the word of God. It says, Unless a man is transformed by the word and invariably walking together with the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
So the word of God is perfect. The next thing is that the word of God is infallible or trustworthy. Like we said earlier, it stands the test of time. And one benefit of that word in your life is that it will make you wise. Make you a wise man. I think I've shared this before. I was in a gathering where they were talking about a very, very brilliant man, a social crusader. They spoke so much about his um, virtues and I agreed. Until the Holy Spirit whispered into my ears and said, but he was a fool. Ah. Like Jeremiah, I could not contain it. I could not restrain it until I blotted out in the gathering of intellectuals, but he is a fool. You could hear a pin drop. Where is this crazy, loony SU coming from again? Then I quickly followed up. The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So, and for all the man's virtues, if there was one thing he said, he said there is no God. And you know what? Nobody could argue with me. That was the end of that conversation. Why? Because the word of God gave me a contrary opinion and let me understand that it's only his word that will stand the test of time. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty five, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to those who are childlike. I make bold to say that if you have the word of God in you and you apply it correctly, it will make you the wisest man in the room. Why? Because there is nothing that you come across in contemporary times that the word of God does not have an answer for or an opinion. I don't want to use an opinion because an answer for. So the word of God is perfect. It's infallible. And that's Psalm 19. In verse 8, it says, The word of God is right. The commandments of the Lord are right. They are founded on righteousness. It is not brought together by the context of your culture or social norms. The word of God is a function of a righteous God. I was talking with a friend yesterday. <laughs> I said, you know, if you really look at God very well, he's not a Democrat. Oop. Maybe I shouldn't go there. God is not a Democrat. God is a theocrat. And he rules by his principles and by his word. And the word of God is righteous. God is not a nice God. Hello? But it's a righteous God. I hope you know there's a difference between being nice and being righteous. 
A lot of people say Pastor Femi is nice. I begin to wonder if it is a good, um, good virtue. Praise God. I just saw one or two people look at me and say, you nice. It just shows you that everything is subjective. To some people, I'm the nicest man upon the face of the earth. To some, that guy, I beg, second base. Praise God. But I like to pray that uh, irrespective of your opinions of me, God can look at me and say, mm, in him I see the righteousness of my son, Christ Jesus. That's all you need in life. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I know there's something about being righteous before God. The scripture says it brings joy to your heart. Because why? You have right standing before God. And that's why irrespective of what you may be going through. And I pray for grace for you to go through this season that you are going through. Because the Bible says everything shall come to pass. I saw a post from a friend recently on Facebook in which she brought up a photograph. In that photograph, she looked very good. She looked, it was photo ops, apparently. She said, this photograph, I was going through one of the most challenging seasons of my life. She said, but like the Bible, it has come to pass. I pray for all of you. You will outlive your problems. But more importantly, like that, my friend, you will look back at it and laugh. Because the Bible says, when God turned the captivity of Sarah, the captivity of mercy, the captivity of Femi, we were like them that dreamt. You know, there's no way you go through problems. When you've come out, you've come out. You may want to relieve it, <laughs> but you cannot live in it. Is somebody listening to me? So, while you are going through what you are going through, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let your confidence like Jeremiah is that I am in right standing with you. Proverbs 11.3, Proverbs 11.3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. I'll share something very personal. I don't think I've ever shared it on this altar. Some of you are old enough in this church. You know, there was one great season of great trial for me as a pastor of this church. What a lot of people don't know is that before that trial came, God spoke to me through a prophet all the way from America. Oibo, not, not fake prophet. Ouch. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. It's not about the color of the skin. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure when I say prophets, you, you conjured up some... Uh, I, know, I know my people. You conjured up some, it's a, a mirror, a, a, an image in your heart. So I had to quickly put that in. Okay? She told me. He said, they are going to throw a lot of things at you. Including, they are going to try to blemish your character. He said, but God says your integrity will stand for you. Those of you who are in the front row, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, all kinds of nonsense. I know, I said, of all things you even accuse me of, this one, uh, uh, God justify me. A panel was set up. Looking for what's not, not lost. And I remember, she said it. She said, your integrity will stand for you. And God was true to his word. 
the integrity of the righteous will guide them. But the flip side is that the perverseness of transgressors shall what? Destroy them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Finally, because of time, I've been told my time is up. The word of God is pure, is clear. That's it. It says what? It enlightens the eyes. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. My word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's words is life. As you speak it, as you meditate on it, the Bible tells me it will illuminate you. Speak the word. Hold on to the word. Know the promises of God. And be rest assured in it. Brethren, we're in seasons when we're increasingly being pressured to question the essence of our faith. And I don't know what you are going through, but I'm sure under the sound of my voice, there are a lot of Jeremiah's right now. Who are saying, I just want to let go. I want to give up. I don't know why I'm in church again today. <laughs> I don't want to pray. I don't know how I'm finding myself kneeling down beside my bread to pray. I feel God has let me down. Yet, I don't know why I still speak up for him. Let me tell you why. Because like Jeremiah, his word is like a fire in your heart. It's like fire in your bones. And deep down, you know, God is too good to fail. He has seen you through in the past. You may not know how he's going to see you through this present predicament. But one way or the other, you know, because you are still alive, there is hope. And so, despite and in spite of yourself, you still stand up and you turn up. The person we interviewed on radio today said, many times I don't even feel like worshipping God. But I find myself worshipping anyway. Sometimes your prayers don't even make sense to you. And you're wondering why are you praying but you still pray. Why? Because like Paul says we are constrained by the love of God. We are going to pray. And the first prayer, I want you to pray. I say, Father, I thank you for your word. I confess, I reiterate that your word endures forever. 
prayed that prayer and said, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that endures forever. I thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. I confess that it endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This second prayer, I want you to pray with all of your heart. I want you to pray it and you mean it. Say, Father, let your word be in my heart like fire. Kindle your fire in me. Make my heart a fireplace for you. Pray that prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word be in my heart like fire. Kindle your fire in me. Lord, revive me. Make my heart, oh God, a fireplace for you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The church will say more convincing amen. This one, I pray you will mean it. Say, Father, let your word and your spirit ignite a passion to love you and to propose to do your will. Pray that prayer. Father, let your word and spirit ignite a passion to love you. Give me a purpose to do your will. Father, let your word and your spirit ignite a passion to love you. And purpose to do your will. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want to pause here. See the attitude of prayer. Are you struggling in your love for God? Are you just going through the motions, but there's no real relationship? Did you mean that prayer where you said, let your word and spirit ignite a passion to love you? If you mean it, I want to pray with you. In essence, what I'm saying is that do you want to give your heart to Jesus genuinely? Or do you want to rededicate your life to him? If there's any such person here, just raise up your hand wherever you are. See? Pastor, I want to love him. If you're raising, raise up very well. Thank you. It has nothing to do with me. You know, you want to love God, but it's a struggle. You can't do it by your power. It's only through the grace of Jesus. Thank you. Quickly, because my time is fast spent. I want you to do one more thing for me so that I can see. Wherever you are, just stand. Just stand. I want to pray with you. If you receive the card, just stand wherever you are. Thank you. For the rest of us, I'm still coming back to you. You see, pray one more prayer. Say, Father, give me the courage like Jeremiah to share your word with grace and boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Father, Lord, like Jeremiah, give me the courage to share your word with grace and boldness. In Jesus' name I pray. 
while you are still praying that prayer, for those of you who received a card, I want you to please repeat after me. Please pray after me if you received a card. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I want to love you more. I want to know you more. I invite you to my life. Please dwell in my heart from this moment on. The grace to love you and to live for you I receive it now. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Father, I pray that you ignite fire in the bones of everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord God Almighty, you will meet each and every one at their points of need. I pray, Lord, irrespective of what anyone is going through now like jeremiah let your word be a fire in their hearts and bones in jesus name lord give them victory and lord almighty let your name be glorified in jesus precious name we have prayed praise the lord hallelujah to jesus Amen and amen. Please, if you received a card, um, I want you to please fill the card in detail. And um, please, at the end of the service, I want you to please hold on. I want one or two of my ministers to please minister to you. So just fill it in detail. At the end of the service, uh, the ministers will come and attend to you. And the joy of the Lord, may he be your strength. In Jesus' name, I pray.